I'm Kathy S. Miller, and I am the coordinator of Open Educational Resources at Oklahoma State University in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Um, my job also, uh, I'm the OER librarian and uh, the liaison to the music and theater departments. So my, my PhD, my dissertation, um, investigated academic library publishing of open educational resources. And kind of what brought it brought me to it was early, we were, we were developing a publishing workflow, right, for OER. And um, until I came on board, it had been kind of informally housed in our scholarly communications house of the library, which is, those are some nuances that until you're hanging out in the library, you know, they're, they're not all that important to you. But we discovered they, they really were impacting our workflow for OER and that we were really trying to just overlay the open access publishing practices onto OER. And at the same time, I'd finished reading Made with Creative Commons uh, and was exploring, you know, what, what does the commons mean and was fascinated by the idea of credibility and the commons being established by people using it, right, and reusing it and as opposed to credibility and open access or the Scalcom house being because some one fancy said, yes, this is true. And um, along with that, uh, I was also in my district, in my PhD studies, doing some uh, review work, right, in journals and discovering a little bit more about the peer review process and, and how sometimes it looks differently than we might anticipate. And uh, so we were just kind of wrestling with all that. And I wanted to make sure that we didn't incorporate any practices into our workflow that hurt OER, uh, it, it, you know, the strengths of OER and bringing previously unheard voices and ideas into the scholarly, you know, conversation. I, I didn't want to be part of making the same thing happen that's always happened. Um, and so that that informed, I, I wanted to actually step, jump forward a couple of paces, right? Like so many of us do in our dissertation, I thought I'd drawn a conclusion, uh, but my committee was so good. And also the GOGM folks about saying, hey, well, actually you need to back up and see if this is a real thing that open access scholarly communications publishing practices really do overlay onto OER practices in academic libraries. And so that's what my dissertation was about. It was an in-depth case study of another institution here in the United States. Um, and I found uh, I, uh, some very interesting things and also some other things that I hadn't anticipated to find. So that was neat. But coming out of that, now I'm kind of, I wanted to look other places and see if that is happening more than two institutions, right? But then also exploring the fact that OER, although the name is new, right, because it was coined in, you know, we all know this, 2002 at the whatever, um, the practices are are just not. Um, anyone who's been an educator knows that we always have walked down the hall and borrowed our peers' lessons plans and brought them back and changed them. Um, and also in librarianship, when you talk about uh, back in the day, you know, the the works being taken off ships and copied, you know, before the ships were released into port, that, that th these aren't new practices. We've given it a new name, um, but they aren't new practices. And the reason I think that's relevant, uh, also, and this is informed by diffusion innovations theory, is as we look at a retention, promotion, and tenure, and the role that that plays and whether or not faculty are willing to engage in these open practices, um, I think if we're able to identify ways that these open practices already match existing practices, um, and quit thinking of them as something new, then we'll be able to map kind of what people value in existing scholarly practices as they are identified in retention and promotion and see that they're actually happening over here in these open, open practices as well. 